This is the site where the Gen 6 fab will be constructed. Wisconsin was ready to receive Foxconn. It was ready to receive industrial manufacturing. Foxconn. It's a name that's been in the news a lot lately for this huge electronics factory it's building in Wisconsin. So far, it's just one building. Tech giant Foxconn is rethinking plans for a multi-billion dollar plant touted by the president that was supposed to bring thousands of jobs. So what does Foxconn do? It's the world's largest contract manufacturer of electronics. Foxconn specializes in making things like PCs, servers, power supplies, connectors, and smartphones. In fact, Foxconn is Apple's largest iPhone assembler. Other big name customers include Dell, Samsung, and Sony. Though not a household name in the US, Foxconn is renowned in China, where it's the largest private employer. If there's one company that's going to be at the heart of international trade, geopolitics, electoral politics, and technology, it's not Google or Facebook or Apple, it's Foxconn. Now, Foxconn is coming to the U.S., and it's in the midst of building a big, contentious factory in Wisconsin. American does not have a single LCD fab. We are going to change that. As part of the deal, Foxconn said it would invest $10 billion to build a high-tech manufacturing facility for liquid crystal display, or LCD screens. I think we can say this is, we can say, the eighth wonder of the world. Foxconn also pledged to create 13,000 jobs in exchange for around $4 billion of incentives from the state of Wisconsin. But things haven't gone as planned. Foxconn's made promises to a number of places, but hasn't always followed through on them. Clearly, the, uh, the deal that was struck is not, no longer in play. So we went to Wisconsin to find out what is Foxconn and what is it really doing in the farmlands of Wisconsin? Foxconn, simply put, manufactures electronics for a variety of companies, specifically what's known in the industry as the three C's, computer, communication, and consumer electronics. Foxconn is the world's largest contract manufacturer for electronics. They make a lot of iPhones. They make a lot of Sony Playstations. They make a lot of Nintendo Switch uh, gaming consoles. There's a really good chance that in your house you already have products that were uh, assembled in a Foxconn facility. All those electronics brought Foxconn 157 billion in revenue in 2018. It employs around a million people all over the world with manufacturing facilities in 24 countries, including Mexico, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and of course, China, among others. The Taiwan-based company is best known for its partnership with Apple, assembling iPhones, iPads, and other products. Apple is very important to Foxconn. Apple is Foxconn's largest customer. When Apple does well, Foxconn tends to do well. And when Apple stumbles a little bit, Foxconn tends to stumble as well. So when iPhone sales slumped earlier this year, Foxconn took a hit. The company reported that profits were down 17.7% in the first quarter of 2019. Now, President Trump is imposing tariffs on Chinese companies, and both Apple and Foxconn have been caught up in the US-China trade tensions. Foxconn's business has probably been affected more than any other company on earth by the U.S.-China trade war. Because Foxconn's the number one exporter of value from China, they've been hit hardest by Donald Trump's tariffs, and they will continue to be hit hardest by them, as well as by Apple's downturn and uh, lowering of the sales of iPhones. At an investors' conference earlier this month, Foxconn said it is prepared to deal with the risks from the trade dispute. Although both Apple and China's Huawei technologies have made some changes to their orders, Foxconn says it faces limited impacts and that it has enough capacity outside China to meet Apple's demands in the American market. 20 years ago, Steve Jobs asked Terry Guo if he could make Apple products and manufacture them in the United States so the Apple products could say, made in USA. At that time, Terry Guo said, no, that's way too expensive. I can't do that. But now with rising labor costs in China, there are comparable abilities in other places. Although there's no indication iPhones will be manufactured in Wisconsin, Foxconn did tell us it now plans to make much more than the originally planned 75-inch televisions. So a building this size, what volume of product can we expect to see pumping out of there once it's at full capacity? Uh, I mean, that's, that's a challenging metric to tell you um, because the products that are associated with us are multiple products. We will do commercial TVs up to 65 inch, but it also has multiple liquid crystal display sizes that we can produce that are applicable in a variety of industries from automotive 
to education, to entertainment, to healthcare, to medicine, to sports, security, and uh, smart city application. To understand its ever-changing promises for the factory in Wisconsin, let's first take a look at Foxconn's history, its rapid growth, and what it's up to in other countries. The company had humble beginnings. Terry Guo founded Foxconn with just $7,500 in 1974, calling it Han Hai Precision Industry, a name that's still used today. The story of Foxconn goes way back when, you know, he started by making a certain kind of knob for televisions, and he would come to the United States and sell them and really barnstorm businesses to get them to buy his parts. Coming from that to where he is now, uh, where Foxconn is now, you have to say it's had a huge rise. Foxconn's first manufacturing plant opened in China in 1988. It hit the global stage in 2001, when American-based Intel hired Foxconn to manufacture its motherboards over major competitor Asus. By 2012, Foxconn was manufacturing about 40% of consumer electronics worldwide. Today, Foxconn has diversified across a multitude of businesses, from making circuit boards and home appliances to industrial computers and semiconductors. It acquired Japanese electronics maker Sharp in 2016, and it was a major investor in Future Mobility, a car startup that aims to sell all electric vehicles by 2020. And just last year, Foxconn announced it will buy electronics manufacturer Belkin International, which owns well-known router and computer accessory brands Linksys and Wemo. And these days, founder Terry Guo is no longer solely focused on making electronics. Terry Guo is now running for president of Taiwan. And as a result of that, Terry Guo's business interests in Foxconn are running directly into his political interests as a candidate for president of Taiwan. Still, Guo and Foxconn have accomplished a lot since the company's early days. In fact, Foxconn was so successful that it was 25 years before the company reported an annual dip in revenue. But the company's revenue has decreased in the past three quarters, going from about 43 billion new Taiwan dollars to about 13 billion, thanks in part to a decline in iPhone sales. Foxconn has also received a fair share of bad press for issues at its factories. The scandal that made Foxconn into a household name in the United States was in 2010. You had uh, 14 of its factory workers commit suicide, uh, sometimes by jumping off uh, Foxconn factory buildings. These people work 16-hour shifts, and they live very close together in very small dormitories. It's a very grim existence. It's gotten so bad that Foxconn has had to put nets up around the buildings to catch people when they jump off the roof. In a statement, Foxconn says, immediately following the tragic incidents in 2010, Foxconn implemented company-wide comprehensive measures to mitigate against these tragedies being repeated. Foxconn has also been criticized for a series of deals that didn't work out as promised. Terry Guo and Foxconn talked about setting up a plant in Brazil, but that never happened. In 2013, he talked about setting up a plant in Pennsylvania, and that didn't happen. Now those deals weren't as far along as the one in Wisconsin, but still, Terry Guo has a track record of promising a lot and delivering a little. Which leads us back to Foxconn's latest deal, the promise of what would be one of the largest electronics factories in the world on 3,000 acres of farmland 30 miles south of Milwaukee, in the village of Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin. The deal first started when the White House called the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation in April 2017. Days later, then-Governor Scott Walker was in a meeting with Foxconn founder Terry Guo and Wisconsin EDC head Mark Hogan. I met with Terry Guo in the White House on April 28th of 2017. That was the first time we met with the company. And so I've been involved uh, from day one. Foxconn put out a request for proposal. Wisconsin and the village of Mount Pleasant offered the company almost $4 billion in subsidies if it creates the promised number of jobs with an average salary of just under $54,000. For Foxconn, the site location makes sense. It takes a huge amount of water to clean the glass used in manufacturing LCD screens. And Mount Pleasant is less than 10 miles from Lake Michigan. No other Great Lakes state came close to Wisconsin's almost $4 billion deal. Why is it worth almost $4 billion? It's worth the dollars because of the industry that it's bringing to the state, uh, to the United States and to Wisconsin, uh, the jobs. But it's very scalable. So if this ended up being a, an employer that employed 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 jobs in a state that we have employment of 3 million people, that's still a very significant investment. So why did the state want the deal so badly? 
and they offered the richest economic development deal to Foxconn in the history of the United States. Donald Trump wanted to revive American manufacturing and have a symbol of it. Paul Ryan wanted this plant to be in his district, and it was. And Scott Walker wanted to be seen as the jobs governor. All three of them have been sorely let down. Hogan, who's stepping down later this year, has a different official take on why Wisconsin wanted the Foxconn project. Manufacturing is very much a part of Wisconsin's DNA. It's our legacy for 150 years, over 150 years. Manufacturing has been critical to what we do. It represents almost 20% of our workforce, 20% uh, of our GDP. And the fact that Foxconn was going to bring an industry that did not exist in the United States, that was very compelling, very intriguing from our perspective. Racine County, where Mount Pleasant is based, has promised Foxconn $750 million. This is a great day for American workers and manufacturing, and for everyone who believes in the concept and the label made in the USA. Less than a year after Trump announced the deal, Guo was in Mount Pleasant, breaking ground with him. Foxconn's original promise was impressive, but plans have continued to change ever since. This will be one of the largest jobs ever built in the world. Foxconn was initially supposed to build a Generation 10.5 factory to manufacture screens up to 75 inches for TVs and other devices. In February, Foxconn announced it would build a Generation 6 factory instead, which will manufacture smaller screens. There are multiple Gen 10.5 facilities around the world, and there's a glut in that market. So really, business is market-driven, and the Gen 6 factory gives us a greater variety of products to be effective in the marketplace. So far, Foxconn has also fallen short on the jobs it promised to create. It lost out on a $9.5 million tax incentive in 2018 because it's created 182 jobs, 78 short of the 260 promised by the end of that year. But that doesn't seem to worry Hogan. It just proves that the contract works. They didn't create the jobs. It's performance-based contract. They don't get the tax credits. They understand that. There are tax incentives for uh, Foxconn uh, if we meet certain criteria within uh, the contract with the state, and we're dedicated to that. That, in a nutshell, is how Wisconsin says it's protected. If Foxconn doesn't deliver, it won't get all that nearly $4 billion in subsidies promised by the state. They're moving an industry to the United States, so they really have to get up and running. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint. But some people, including Wisconsin's new governor, Tony Evers, are questioning Foxconn's promises. Governor Walker lost re-election to Evers in 2018. Clearly, the, uh, the deal that was struck is no longer in play. And so we, we will be working with uh, uh, individuals at Foxconn and, of course, at, with WEDC to figure out how a new set of parameters uh, should be negotiated. Tom Stringer has decades of experience negotiating big construction deals and says that Foxconn in Wisconsin just doesn't make sense. The math would never have pointed to this being a location in the first place that could have executed a project of this scope. I mean, that, that, the numbers just don't lie. The workforce wasn't there. The skill sets aren't in the U.S. The margins aren't there to globally compete unless we wanted to substantially pay more for LCD-related products. And, and I think the market is dictating that we don't. So it's um, you, trying to find the business reason. I think that's something that only Foxconn can answer. So we asked them. Wisconsin possesses an excellent education system, both in our technical colleges and also in our advanced degree, our universities. And we bring the best in manufacturing technology to marry with the best in workforce. And, and that's a, a recipe for great success and quality product. But the fact remains that if Foxconn does follow through, it would be a very big deal. It is the first ever uh, TFT LCD factory in the United States. The first one ever. This is a major undertaking. To make way for Foxconn's huge project, the land and some Mount Pleasant locals have undergone massive change in the last two years. This pad itself is equivalent to 17 football fields. If you're a basketball fan, 221 basketball courts. This summer, we will uh, we'll start the vertical building. The floor itself, the slab that the uh, site will be on, uh, is 125,000 cubic yards of concrete, and that's 12,500 truckloads. The new Wiscon Valley Science and Technology Park is so big, nearby I-94 is being expanded from six lanes to eight, and big enough that dozens of people have been moved so their homes could be leveled to make way for the project. 
Things have changed a lot. There was uh, 12 other homes that were in this neighborhood and they've all been torn down. Jim Mahoney grew up in Mount Pleasant and unlike his neighbors, decided not to take Foxconn's offer to buy him out. He's so set on staying, he was planting trees in the yard when we arrived unannounced. It totally feels like a bad dream. One day I'm, I'm at the happiest I can be. I got a nice place out in the county. And then five minutes later, somebody's telling me I gotta get out of it. Leslie Mai and her husband bought their Mount Pleasant home in 2017 with the hope of living in a quiet rural town. But part of their yard is now being taken through eminent domain to expand the street leading to Foxconn's plant. And I feel Racine County, Mount Pleasant, and the state of Wisconsin got sucker punched. The environmental impact has been another sticking point. The project was allowed to skirt environmental regulations, with the state of Wisconsin making an exception on several points, including how much water Foxconn can pipe in from nearby Lake Michigan and how much natural habitat can be impacted. We peaked last summer at 90 parts um, air pollution, and the EPA standard for acceptable is 70. Now that's without Foxconn. Our air and our water are important, our health is important, and we feel like we have just been railroaded right over. We're expendable. Foxconn insists this is not the case. We're committed to following all environmental laws and regulations, and we're committed to being good stewards of our community. People really have to be able to look and understand what the benefits are to their area. And I, I think over a longer period of time, people will be on board with the decision to be in Mount Pleasant. But for now, residents we spoke to remain concerned by a lack of transparency in Foxconn's plans. I mean, I understand Lake Michigan's right there, but I don't know why they picked right here. This stuff is not supposed to happen in Mount Pleasant. But Foxconn remains unwavering in its commitment to Wisconsin. I have talked to our corporate and they have uh, reiterated that we are committed to 13,000 jobs and the investment in the state. And it's even set a firm deadline for beginning production on those American-made LCD panels. Fourth quarter of 2020. We've met every challenge to date and we'll, we'll meet every challenge that comes up in the future. So you're hopeful? I'm, I'm very positive about it and it's exciting to be a part of it from the ground up, literally.